Hi and uh, welcome to another ND War production. So yeah, I've not recorded anything significant in a long while. Well, well uploaded it. I've recorded quite a bit of uh, Space Engineer videos. Um, I was supposed to work through them and compile them and get them working, but yeah, I ran into a few snags and anyhow. We'll start from the beginning. Uh, Christmas kind of hit, but I took a short break, get that out of the way. Um, the idea was that over Christmas I'll be getting the video sorted, worked through, uploaded, looked at and you know, get about 10 episodes to cover me during Christmas and so I could go and spend time with family and whatnot. But Space Engineers is a great game, I love playing with Atomic and Eddie, it was great fun. But Space Engineers updates like weekly, you get new blocks every week and We'd set up the record for like 30 minutes or so, maybe an hour, maybe two hours. And it'd take us for about two hours of recording, which is about four episodes. And if I'm uploading one a week, that's like at least four weeks of data and four weeks of space engineers. That means that in them four weeks they could have done all sorts of updates which means you as viewers would be quite far behind um the most basic solution is we only record half an hour a week but when you spend an hour trying to set up a scene for half an hour's recording you kind of wonder what the hell and similarly when you're constantly trying to edit three different streams that can bite right into edit editing time and I was spending all my time working basically on Space Engineers, trying to get edited, sorted, synced up. A lot of the times I'd have syncing problems after it had rendered for like two or three hours. Look over it again, it's desynced somewhere along the recording and I'd have to go in, do one little bit of change, then re-render the entire scene for another three hours. It was really cutting into everything. Every time Space Engineers had a block as well, they normally do some optimizational code behind it or something will happen and the game looks absolutely nothing like it did when I first started playing Space Engineers. There's a lot of new armor blocks, there's a lot of new other blocks like new rotors which will allow you to have conveyors going through them. There's all sorts of new stuff within the game itself, which is brilliant. They've done a brilliant job, absolutely spot on. But I don't want to dedicate my entire channel just to Space Engineers. There's other people that will do that, like Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, Sage, Tazu. They all have fulfilled that role. So I'm kind of in the camp of leave that to them and I'll go back to doing my own thing. Um, it does mean you won't see much from Atomic and Eddie. I have said to Atomic, not to Eddie yet, I will get around to doing it, talking to him about it. Um, there will be a few episodes where basically I'll look over the ships they've built. They do come up and build some amazing things. Eddie in particular doesn't seem to stop building some awesome things within the game. Um, Atomic's ships look amazing every single time I look at them. Well, mine just look like big blocks, but I do have a few things that I'm working on at the moment. So yeah, I'm going to be dropping Space Engineers for the most time for the foreseeable future, basically because it just, it's too much time. Too much time to get the editing done, too much time to get everything synced up, too much time just to do something that should be fun. I'm spending more and more time doing the non-fun bits and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go back to Flame Factorio. Um, to give you some scale, I've got some numbers here. Um, editing a video, recording, editing, rendering and all of that can be up to a five hour process. Full stop. Now the recording bit can be about two hours. That's usually the chunks I do it in because I usually play for that long before I take a break. We then have to 
process the video, edit out rubbish, mute certain noises that might happen, like if a car engine blows up in my street because I live next door to an engineer, car engineer guy, so sometimes you'll start banging away, so sometimes I have to stop recording and paste two recordings together. I have to break it down into 30 minute chunks. You know, the editing process usually takes about half an hour to 20 minutes because it's it's a fairly simple process really i'm just literally chopping it into chunks and muting out some voices or stuff that i don't like I'm, i've got pen and paper next to me so i write down approximately where the times are to mute so it's, it's a relatively fast process but the rendering takes upwards of about three hours for 30 minutes now that's partially my machine and another problem and i will be fixing the problem when i can and more on that in a moment i'll be talking through my upgrades and everything that i plan on doing so rendering takes about three hours then there's post rendering to knock the file size right down which usually takes about an hour um to about 40 minutes to an hour really and then the upload takes like an hour so we're looking at you know a good five six seven hours to sit down and oh and of course the rendering all, all of that stuff per 30 minutes so if I record it for two hours that's like three hours per 30 minutes so quite easily looking at like 12 12 to 15 hours editing and um, rendering I can leave that running overnight so that's not so much of a pain so you know I don't mind doing that I'll leave it running overnight It'll render, I wake up, upload it. Jobs are good. And I don't mind doing the recording bit. And I don't mind doing the editing bit. It's when you've got space engineers, you've got three different perspectives. Trying to merge all of that. It's just, it just took too long for the editing bit. And started really messing with me. Um, I'm going to move on to PC upgrades now because I feel like I've Locked a dead horse now. Um, I got GTX 980 in January as like a birthday present to myself, kind of thing. It needed an upgrade anyhow. From a 560 to a 980, I can tell you I noticed the difference. Instead of getting something like 15 to 20 frames per second in even some of the most basic games, I'm hitting 60 easily. Um, with the new graphics card, I got access to Shadow Player, and this is why I've not recorded anything. Shadow player and my processor does seem to play nice. I think I know the reason. I think it might have something to do with bus speeds. Um, the processor I have can not utilize my motherboard's bus speeds to the maximum. And that was a thing that I bought because of past upgrades. I'll probably elaborate more, especially if people are actually interested. Um, into my reasoning and why it might be my processor and so on, so on and so forth. So Shadow Player lagged my PC out. Just didn't play nice. It also seemed to have messed up open broadcasting software. Don't know how, don't know why, it just did. And so I have spent a good month just trying to get open broadcasting software up and working again. And to a point where it doesn't lag out my PC and knock my frame rate down to 10 FPS no matter what game I play. So hopefully I've got one of two situations coming up. It's going to be about June, July before I can afford a new processor. There's no two ways about that. I know the processor I want and know how much it costs. I know how much money I've got in savings. I know it's going to be June or July-ish, hopefully, I'll be able to get a new processor. The processor will cut the rendering times into very tiny pieces. There's no two ways about that. I'll be throwing eight cores at the rendering instead of four sub-cores at the rendering. I'll also be able to utilize the 980 to such an extreme percentage. At the moment, when it's rendering, it uses about 20%. Again, I think this is due to bus speeds. With the new processor, that should easily get whacked up. So rendering time will slice at least to a quarter, I reckon, when I get a new CPU. 
And hopefully, Shadow Play will work, which means my reliance upon OBS will be diminished. There are some things Shadow Play won't record, um, some things that OBS will work better for than Shadow Play, but until I play around with it, I won't know. The other thing that's been eaten into my time, and I've only had this for about maybe a week and a half now, I bought the new Nintendo 3DS, the newest one. It's absolutely fantastic. Been playing quite a few Wicked Hours on Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter 4. If anyone knows how to record DS games, by the way, let me know. You'll see me fail on Monster Hunter quite epically. Um, but the biggest one I've been playing is Fantasy Life. And it's a bit like Monster Hunter, but a bit more geared towards um, Animal Crossing. Kind of cross between the two. Been playing Fantasy Life because I can play it with my girlfriend and we can both be in the same field, hunting the same monsters and, you know, really battling together and working together. We, we both love playing Minecraft together, we both love working together as a team to build something epic. So Fantasy Life kind of fulfills that little bit of a, a role. We can't really build anything, which we do enjoy doing together, but we can battle together, which is brilliant. Um, I, I recommend both games to everyone out there. Fantasy Life, if you've got a couple of people, it, it only allows up to teams of three. So be warned, your cats go out into a field with like 60 people. It's not an MMORPG type thing. But it is great fun to sit down with a couple of friends and just go and hunt a monster. It's, and some of the monsters in there can be extremely challenging. Um, we took on like a dragon the other day and it took us like 15 minutes easily to kill this one dragon and the game kind of recommends you kill it quite early on and you can't do it you've got to wait till you've leveled up and it took both of us to take down this one dragon so you know having friends to help you out really does make the game a lot better i do like monster hunter but um I can't play that with my girlfriend. She doesn't quite like the Monster Hunter thing. And I don't blame her. It is a lot of grinding. You do feel very rewarded once you've taken down a monster, but it is very grindy. Well, whilst Fantasy Life, you can just run out into the field and instantly start killing. You can't do that in Monster Hunter. So Fantasy Life is kind of where I've placed a lot of my hours. And I've really enjoyed my time with it. Um, I will be going back to Monster Hunter every now and again and if I find a way to record it without using a video camera I know that's going to be someone's first suggestion use a video camera I don't have one I don't plan on getting one and I don't want the tripod and I don't want that rigidness that will come with having to record like that so that's kind of I need something that kind of plugs into the DS somehow or other and or some software that comes on the DS so I can, you know, record for YouTube or something like that. I'm trying to get into contact with Pro Jared because he does a lot of Monster Hunter videos and maybe he can shed some light on to how I would go about doing such a thing. Hopefully he will just turn around and say use a video camera. Stop being lazy. I'll find out soon enough, hopefully. Um, we've also been pl playing Pokemon Sapphire and Ruby, the newest ones. We've not played much of it. Um, I kind of imposed a we have to play together thing on there because what tends to happen with the Pokemon is Rena will go far into the game and I'll be like halfway through whereas she's battling the Elite Four or whoever it is in Safi and Ruby. And that can be really good fun but then there's no real teamwork going on because she's already got half the monsters that I'm trying to catch and I always feel a bit left out and then I lose focus and it can be a bit disappointing for me but she's had loads of fun and I always feel a bit left out so I kind of impose that and then we've not really played it together because we can play, actually play in the same world with Fantasy Life so we've gone over to Fantasy Life and been playing massive amounts of that. The only downside to all of that, of course, is I feel like I'm dragging Rena behind and she feels like she's being dragged behind. Like right now, she's looking at buying a new game for the DS because she can't play any of her current games because she's waiting for me to stop doing whatever I'm doing and come play with her. So 
That's kind of sad for her because now she can't enjoy a DS to the full. Which is my own fault. You know, I should really just kind of sit down and say, go play. But I don't think she would anyhow because she likes playing with me as much as I like playing with her. So it's a two way thing. Um, yeah, that's basically it with the Nintendo 3DS. Just lots and lots of hours poured into that as well over the last week and that bit. Because I've been meaning to do this for about two weeks. And then we got the Nintendo 3DS and I kind of kept putting this off. Also, I'm very embarrassed and fairly uh, about all of this. So, moving on. The other game that I've been playing and spending a lot of my time on, other than doing Factorio optimization, which you'll be seeing a lot of, um, I've been playing Elite Dangerous. And it turns out I'm such a boring player. I see these awesome videos of these guys flying out to solar systems all over the place. Look at what I've discovered. Look at this beautiful sun. Look at these beautiful planets. And I'm not that kind of player. I'm a, I'm a really good fighter. You stick me in a fighter against other players. I will, nine times out of ten, win. I've been playing Elite since... It came out, number one, I used to have a copy on the PC, I'm only like, I'm as, I'm as old as Elite, and so I've been playing that since then, I, be, I played Descent Space, and you know, the entire, um, what's the word, disorientation that comes with playing with space games, I don't get, I, I can easily reorientate myself instantly. One of the classic quotes from Ender's game, one of my most favourite books, maybe not my favourite author, but my favourite book nonetheless is Ender's Game. And one of the phrases in that is, the enemy's gate is down. And when it comes to space games, that I have that mindset, the enemy, whatever, the enemy can be an asteroid, the enemy's gate is down. The target is always down. Full stop, you don't argue, that is the law of the universe. So, with that mindset in place, Space games have never given me any problems. I see players struggling. I see players unable to avoid asteroids because they just can't wrap their head around that they've got like six directions to move in. They always just pick the one which is forwards and then try to steer away from that. I'm quite comfortable with, you know, slam the thing in reverse and go up at the same time. No problem. Doesn't bother me. Might be why I've always been quite attracted to space games. It's also the reason why Atomic kept on me as the pilot and space engineers, because he recognised that in me pretty much instantly. <laughs> um, the other reason why I'm such a boring fat, utterly dangerous, is I tend to tr choose the quickest way to earn money. And unfortunately, nearly dangerous, that involves trading. You go from one part to the other, trading goods. Now, you have to be pretty sad to sit there and watch me trade goods from one station to another and back again, and back again, and back again. I mean, I kind of get bored playing it, hence why I'll change up the stations every now and again. Different stations present different challenges, like sometimes the docking's in the dark and stuff like that. Sometimes I fly through a pirate-infested universe and that kind of gets me a bit excited because it's like, oh, come on then. And uh, none of the NPC pirates stand a chance against what is arguably the best ship in the game. I'm in a python at the moment, decked out with decent amounts of guns and whatnot, but primarily it's a cargo hauler. It's full of cargo um, bears. But none of the NPC pirates have a chance with me. Nine times out of ten, just leave me alone if I'm honest with you. Occasionally an anaconda will come and get me, or another python will come and get me. But players, players that are in a python, or in a, actually, no, the, the last anaconda pilot I went up against, he lost. So, you know, even anaconda players struggle against a python, because the python is just much more manoeuvrable. Full stop. There's no argument there. The Python is more manoeuvrable than an anaconda. But up against other Python players, I kind of get my ass handed to me. Um, let's face it, they're decked out for fighting. They're decked out to take me down. There's 
there's no two ways about that. Of course I'm going to lose. I'd like to win. I'd try my hardest to win. But I'm not going to. I can't do it. So, yeah, I, if you ever see me flying around, I'm always an open player. Don't intend to do any recordings, apart from this one little recording for this particular segment. Just so you can see in the background what I'm doing. Um, yeah. Just don't expect much, really, for Elite Dangerous. Until I actually have made the amount of money I want to make to really deck out my ship to go pirate hunting, I won't be going pirate hunting. And no one wants to see me. If you really do want to watch me haul trash, because this is the whole reason why Yoga Truck Simulator is not going up there. It's boring. Watching me drive from one player to another is boring. I may do it as some kind of, you know, oh, yeah, my life is crappy kind of few episodes. But generally, no. Nah, Elite Dangerous ain't coming up here, as far as I can tell. So, that's basically what I've been up to. For the two months that I've not been doing any recording. And I feel bad. I feel really bad. Um, the future of this channel. I suppose. I've decided now. Tuesdays. I'm going to do all my recording. This does mean that I'm not really. I, I mean I'll be keeping up with comments and whatnot. I've got a few people who are directly in touch with me. That keep badgering me to make more videos. Um, but nothing really I think they subscribe to the channel I'm not quite sure I do only have a small fan base so you know by the time anyone actually comes across this hopefully I've like 50 million episodes in or whatnot. I'm dropping Space Engineers though for now it, I mean if I quit my job and this is a big if if I quit my job and I turn this into a full time career then I can see myself doing what Aaron does. I doubt it. I, I doubt I'm going to pull the fan base in. It's a nice dream. But really, yeah, I'm not pinning my hopes and dreams on this. I'm still looking for a real job. I'm still working at the job I'm in at the moment. But yeah, I, I, my dream is to get this because then I can play four to six hours a day. Then you get like six episodes a day, because I have, to have no reason not to. Apart from how to oversaturate my market, but that's another argument for another day. Um, I, like I said before, I'll be doing flybys of Eddie's and Atoms builds and my own. I've got a, a brilliant ship in the process. Um, it'll be housing a smaller ship which ha has a mining vessel on it and. The small ship with the mining vessel needs a, a 30 by 50 by 30 cargo hangar. And that's got to be attached to the main ship somehow. So you can imagine, kind of imagine the size of the main ship is going to be. When the small ship that flies into it is so big. Um, it's going to be like a small walk-in village kind of idea. I hope. We'll see how we build it. Um, I've got so many Steam games to get on with, honestly. That was one of my primary things, was to build it around all of these humble bundles. I've got so many games that I haven't... I've got a few that I've installed but just never touched. I've got others that are just sitting there, kind of looking at me going, why don't you play me? I've got others that are sitting there going, I've never even heard of you. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to be... The idea is this four to six hours I've got dedicated to Tuesdays. I'll probably do an hour of Factorio. Then I'll do half an hour of new game. Whatever that game might be. I'll just pick one randomly from my Steam library and just play it. Um, I'll probably do something else when it comes along. I might go back to Factorio, you know, take a small break from Factorio, go do another recording, then go back to Factorio. Um, I've got a ton of games like uh, Postmaster, um, Train Fever, all of them kind of games to do, so there's plenty to be getting on with. Um, but one of the greatest things I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start doing one mission a week on Homeworld. 
because I've not played that in years, literal years. And it's another game I grew up on. I absolutely loved it at the time. It is very rock, paper, scissors, fighters beat bombers which beat threats which beat fighters kind of idea. Very rock, paper, scissors. But I really enjoyed playing Homeworld when it first came out. I really, really enjoyed Cataclysm when that first came out, but they're not going to remake that, which is a shame. I've got the disc lying around somewhere, I'm sure I do. Unless I've used it as a coaster, because the damn thing wouldn't play anymore. It's a brilliant game. I really, really miss it. So, every Tuesday, I'm going to be playing the original Homeworld, because I've just re-released the HD version. And that's going to be going up. So that's going to be taking... X amount of time out of you know four to six hours. If a mission takes me literally six hours, I'll be a bit sad and you will get Factorio for a week. Woo hoo. And then every day of the week, I set it up to render. I upload it when I wake up and then go to work. You know, the one that actually pays me so I can do all of this. So that means you should get a new video like every other day, minimum. Or maybe even a video a day, depending on how many I have. Um, yeah, that's basically the plans. They're not exciting, and I do apologise for staying away for two months. I know I do have to get back into this, that's why I'm doing these. And I do promise Bioshock will be on the way at some point. Once I figured out why I can't get the recordings to stay stable. I don't know why, but after like 15 minutes of playing, the screen for the recording always goes black. Now. Didn't used to, before it used to just be dropping frames. Now, after 15 minutes of recording, it goes black. I tried quitting the game and reloading. But it seems to be, after 15 minutes into the game, you can't seem to record. Again, I would laugh my ass off if that's a processor issue. I don't think that one is the... I think that might have to, something now to do with Shadow Play, but I'm not sure. And until I figure that out, you will still work again Bioshock videos, which is a shame. Um, yeah. So, brief Factorio update. I suppose is the last thing that I want to cover. And then... Actually, there is one more topic I want to cover, but yeah, Factorio update. I actually sat down and did the maths behind Factorio. Like, you know, the, the best way to build certain items. Um, so you'll be seeing them. The best way, in my opinion, this is, by the way. And not necessarily always going to be the best way. Depends how much space you've got. But it's on one of my favourite maps that I come across. And I've played this map like at least four times now. So I, I know roughly where all the resources are that I need to go and grab and when to set up the trains and get things running how I like them basically. So you'll be seeing that. Um, we'll start the map again. You'll be seeing how I come across all of these brilliant constructions. You'll see my mini factory and then you'll see the bigger factory game laid out. And I will discuss basically all the uh, updates and everything that's come into Factorio and why I don't like them, such as the tank. I still don't like the tank. I still don't like the vehicles in the game. The, the trains are awesome. The vehicles, not so much, especially when you start hitting the late game. But we'll get into that in Factorio itself. Um, the, the very final thing before I go. Sometime this year I'm getting married. And that's quite a big deal. Don't know how, where, what we're going to do for the marriage. Um, we're thinking of Thailand. Don't know. But that's going to be fun. But that also means I've got to build a backlog up before then. I kind of want to go on holiday at some point because I've not been on holiday now for two years. Um want to get a new job going to be playing more monster hunter and hopefully with pro Jared stuff i'll be able to upload stuff but we'll have to see about that i need a new hard drive i need to manage my finances better 
I need to look into other revenues of cash, even if that's just becoming an independent programmer. I need to start actually sitting down and programming and getting these programs out just to showcase what I can do. Or if that's, say this takes off, signing up to Patreon so you can donate money to me every month. And Yes, I don't know. We will see. That's me signing out. Thanks for listening. Um, ta-ra.